good morning students as you all know that i am teaching you analog circuits right so i'll be covering your remaining syllabus through this online mode so kindly understand the situation and please cooperate with us so you all are requested to go and subscribe my youtube channel only then you will be able to understand the knowledge of analog circuits and cover the syllabus by staying at home so it is mandatory for all the students please cooperate and adjust with us and utilize the benefits of an internet so starting with the topics initially the topic is essentials of transistor oscillator basically as i have already told you in the lecture that an amplifier uses the negative feedback and the oscillator uses a positive feedback right so for an oscillator there are three basic elements oscillatory circuit that is tank circuit electronic amplifier and the feedback network right it is the basic block diagram of a transistor oscillator right oscillatory circuit electronic amplifier feedback network and it is the output so starting with the first element oscillatory circuit oscillatory circuit also called a tank circuit which that consists of an inductive coil having inductance l connected in parallel with a capacitor of capacitance c the frequency of oscillation depends upon the value of l and c and the actual frequency of oscillation is the resonant or the natural frequency next we have the equation of frequency f that is equals to 1 upon 2 pi under root lc we all know the units of frequency is in hertz where l is the inductance of coil in henry and c is the capacitance of capacitor in farad right it is the first element and the second element is what electronic amplifier electronic amplifier will receive dc power from the battery and converts it into ac power the oscillations occurring in the tank circuit are applied to the input of the electronic amplifier we will get increased output of these three oscillations because we all know that the amplifier means the amplification of the signal it will enhance the strength of the signal so the output of the amplifier can be supplied to the tank circuit to meet the losses right now about the third element that is feedback network feedback network supplies a part of output power to the tank circuit in correct phase to aid the oscillations the feedback circuit provides positive feedback right and the amplifier uses the negative feedback and the oscillator uses the positive feedback it is about the basic of elements that we are using in the oscillator circuit and next we have the frequency stability of oscillator right the frequency stability of an oscillator is a measure of its ability to maintain as nearly a frequency as possible over as long as a time interval as possible the deviations in frequency are caused due to the variations in the values of circuit components transistor parameters supply voltage output load that determine the oscillator frequency so the first two topics are the basics for an oscillator first we have the elements and second we have the frequency stability now precaution criteria it is very 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 important topic for 2 marks and 5 marks according to this an amplifier will work as an oscillator if it satisfies a set of conditions so there are basically two condition one and two only then an amplifier will work as an oscillator it is the block diagram showing amplifier a feedback network beta v output input to the amplifier is v input it is the feedback voltage vf plus indicates that they are using the positive feedback and it is supply voltage or we can say that source voltage that is equals to zero so first condition is what the total phase shift should be either 0 degree or 360 degree for positive feedback that is phi equals to 0 degree it is the first condition second condition is what v input equals to vs plus vf feedback voltage and further feedback voltage is what beta multiplied by v out and v out is what a v in so we got this equation v in equals to vs plus beta a v input now we will shift this equation to the left side we get vs equals to what 
v input minus beta a v input now we will take common v input and substitute the value of v s that is 0 and by equating the value of 0 we got beta a equals to 1 so basically these are the two conditions for a caution criteria that is phi equals to 0 degree and beta a equals to 1 right and next we have the if beta a equals to 1 then we will having the undamped oscillations or we can say that self-sustained oscillations if beta a equals to 1 then we get these kind of oscillations if beta a less than 1 or greater than the 1 then we get a damped oscillations we get these are these kind of oscillations but for an oscillator these kind of oscillations are important these are known as self-sustained oscillations so it is mandatory to maintain a condition and to satisfy the condition of beta a equals to 1 that is equals to undamped oscillations right it is all about the precaution criteria and next we have the types of oscillator there are number of oscillators right rc oscillator and lc oscillator rc and lc oscillator means the components they are using is resistor and capacitor lc means inductors and capacitor right so in today's lecture we will cover the rc phase shift oscillator so starting with the rc phase shift oscillator it is the basic circuit of rc phase shift oscillator right these are the biasing resistance resistor capacitor rc collector resistor emitter resistor ce cc and these three are the one two three are the phase shift network see the diagram very carefully the rc circuit is set to oscillations by variation caused in the base current this variation in the base current is ampl amplified in collector circuit the output of the amplifier is supplied to an rc feedback network the rc network produces a phase shift of 180 degree between output and input voltages right so total phase shift is about 180 degree that means this it is the first network it is the first second and third three combinations of rc means one combination is providing you phase shift of 60 degree again 60 degree again 60 degree so 60 plus 60 plus 60 equals to 180 degree the total phase shift is 180 degree it is the basic circuit of rc phase shift oscillator right now it is the equivalent circuit of rc phase shift oscillator by using the hybrid model that is h parameters where hie is input resistance hoe is output resistance hre means reverse gain hfe means forward gain it is the equivalent circuit of the phase shift oscillator by using h parameters or hybrid model right now next we have the now next we have some assumptions if we make these assumptions then this circuit can be simplified further so according to these assumptions first is hre is negligibly small so therefore hre v out can be neglected so here in the diagram hre is very small so hre multiplied by v out can be neglected right in second assumption we have ho is also very small that is 1 upon hoe is much larger than rc so we can neglect the effect of hoe so by making these assumptions and by replacing the current source by voltage source we get this circuit right we get this circuit see the circuit diagram very carefully after making the assumptions and by replacing the current source by voltage source right now the question arises how this rc is formed right so basically in the previous circuit we have 1 by hoe and rc seems to be in parallel with so we will solve the parallel combination of rc and 1 by hoe by solving the parallel combination we got rc so that is why i put rc here this is the biggest mistake that every student will do in the exam so it is mandatory for all the students to kindly listen 
the video carefully and also practice it at your home by yourself only then you will be able to understand the derivation right so here it is the rc as the logic of putting the rc over there right now starting with the derivation part as you can see in the diagram there are three loops one two and three so basically we will put the kvl that is kirchhoff's voltage law in all the three loops in the first loop in the second loop and in the third loop by putting by applying kvl in the first loop we got hfe ibrc plus r plus rc plus 1 upon j omega c and the current flowing is i1 and again r i2 equals to 0 similarly you can see the equations basically equation number 1 of loop 1 loop 2 equation and the loop 3 equation right loop 1 equation is hfe ibrc plus r plus rc plus 1 upon j omega c i1 minus r i2 equals to 0 second equation is minus r i1 plus 2 r plus 1 upon j omega c i2 minus r i b equals to 0 third is minus r i2 plus 2 r plus 1 upon j omega c i b equals to 0 right so basically these are the three equations basically i1 current is flowing in this loop right r is having the value of current of this current and this current also similarly in this case and this case right so basically these are the three equations and we will put xc equals to 1 upon omega c in the derivation part right these are the three equations i1 i1 here 0 i1 i2 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 ib ib and ib so the, the determinants of i1 i2 and i3 must be zero you all know the method of solving this right by making a matrix these are the determinants of i1 i2 and ib i1 r plus rc1 upon j omega c in this minus r in this zero in i2 minus r 2r minus jxc minus r and ib hfe rc minus r 2r minus jxc right so on solving this matrix we got this equation kindly see the equation very carefully and try to solve it at your home right now next we have by solving this equation we got this and again by opening the brackets we got this equation in this equation we will be having the real as well as imaginary part right so basically in oscillator we have to find the value of frequency of oscillation right so for solving the value of frequency of oscillation we need to equate the imaginary components only right so basically from this equation we only equate the imaginary parts so by equating the imaginary parts equal to zero we got six r square xc plus 4r rcxc minus xc cube equals to 0. On solving is xc equals to what? Under the root 6r square plus 4r rc, right? Now, xc equals to what? 1 upon omega c and omega c equals to what? 2 pi fc. So, by putting the value, we got 2 pi fc equals to 1 upon under the root 6r square plus 4r rc, right? And the shifting by shifting the value of 2 pi c over there, we got R f equals to this, right? Now, as I have already told you that phase shift oscillator is the RC phase shift oscillator. That means we will change the value of R and C in this kind of oscillator. So by taking the by taking common R, we got f equals to 1 upon 2 pi R C under the root 6 plus 4 R C by R. It is the final expression of frequency of oscillation, right? Now we have two cases when R equals to RC, then R equals to RC means this RC will cancel, then F equals to what? 1 upon 2 pi RC under the root 10. It is the first case. 
second case is when r is very very larger than rc means the equation will be like f equals to 1 upon 2 pi rc under root 2 n where n is the number of stages of rc section in the in the pre, in the circuit diagram we have in the circuit diagram we have three networks three sets of rc so n equals to 3 we got f equals to 1 upon 2 pi rc under the root 6 so basically facial oscillator is operated in class a so as to keep the distortion to minimum frequency range from 20 hertz to 200 hertz 200 hertz to 2 kilohertz 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz can be obtained by using different set of resistors so basically by changing different values of resistor we can have the frequency range different different frequency range and capacitors can also be varied from 40 picofarad to 450 picofarad so basically it is an rc net circuit it is an rc oscillator so by changing the value of r and c we get different value of frequency right here is the here is the range of the frequency by which we can set the different value of resistance and capacitance as well. The variations of the capacitance of these three capacitors keep the input impedance to the phase shift network constant and also keep constant the magnitude of beta and A beta. Therefore, the amplitude of oscillations will remain unaffected as the frequency is adjusted. So, it is all about the RC phase shift oscillator. Thank you.